Hey guys, Bob Parkinen here, and welcome back to Warpath in From the Depths. And right now we're going to engage this enemy fleet that responded right after we destroyed their main fortress. So we're going to use the usual tactic of stay back and just take them out with the missiles. So let's get these guys back here. Now these coffin nails... I've seen they are pretty vulnerable to missiles, especially a lot of them, so this will do this will be plenty to take them down. The only thing that really makes them deadly is when they get over your ships when they're hovering above them and your ships just can't hit them. Especially if they're not armed with anti air. They'll just wreck your whole fleet. Also, um, as I said in the last episode, we actually have three new ships, and they're each battleships. One, we have a kind of larger, smaller, in that range. Um, and those will fill the role of kind of close engagements, which we need because we only have these missile cruisers that are effective against the enemy right now. And the battleships will actually definitely supplement our missile cruisers because the battleships can kind of get up in the face of the enemy, take most of the damage, and then our missile cruisers will be in the back just kind of hammering them with missiles. Okay, this scuttle gun is in range. So all our missiles target him, and then once he's down, we will go back to main base, construct our battleship designs, and build mining rigs inside these uh, resource zones since we lost this one. Well, we didn't lose it, but since we haven't put one here yet. Okay, he's out of action. Let's turn our ships off. And we'll be right back with our new battleships. Now it looks like as we were building our battleships, they're in production, they're almost done. Probably like 10, 20 more blocks. Uh, we were actually being attacked by, looks like a damaged, kind of damaged fleet. But we're going to take these guys out, gather resources from them. And then deploy our battleships. As usual, I'm going to stay out of the range of their guns. Because our ships are very vulnerable to well placed hits and considering they're very lightly armored. I'm going to have the ships target this paddle gun because if it gets in range it'll just destroy us. Now it does have an anti-missile uh, system right there, lasers. So hopefully we can take that down. And as you can see, even though they can shoot down the missiles, the fragmentation warheads still shoot into their target. Okay, let's target these weaker ships now. Both of the main ships. That scuttle gun got taken out within like two missiles. And then the paddle gun is mostly disabled at least with its main gun. 
His missiles are still active though, so let's actually reacquire that as a target. Okay, now that he's down, let's take out these remaining light targets. <laughs> he's dead, got a hell of a lot of damage done to him. And these guys should only take like one or two missiles. I honestly don't know why they would try to attack us like that. Maybe they thought they're, maybe they thought that other fleet that attacked us a few minutes ago was still here and they survived or something and they just sent like a support fleet to try to come up behind us but I like that how when you hit the ammo the uh, turret blows off the top that's pretty cool Okay, now let's unveil our new battleships. And here are our brand new battleships. Now this one on the right is the C class, which is a little bit larger than the A class over there, but what it has is it has an AA gun, two large long range cannons in the front, and then two side cannons for engaging targets when it broadsides. These uh, rear cannons can also aim uh, directly in front to assist the uh, main cannon. Now right here we have the E class which is the larger of the two and it has a main gun with five large long range I think the range is about two kilometers uh, guns with advanced well composite armor all throughout this ship so it can definitely take more of a beating than the other two battleships and the gun also sports this armor let me see basically what it is is just an air pocket in between both uh, slant slanted armor pieces so basically what would happen is when an impact comes in from a explosive shell or a rocket the outer layer of the armor explodes and the inner this layer second layer will won't be damaged at all and it'll allow it to continue the protection of the sensitive components inside also it has a uh, same caliber gun, actually a bit larger caliber gun on the top and on a 360 turret which allows it to engage targets all the way around it in case an enemy is able to speed past this main gun uh, the enemy will be engaged but with this uh, 360 turret on the top and in the back we have anti-air missiles for air targets that get above the ship to where it won't be able to where its main guns won't be able to engage the target and lastly we have the a class which is the smaller of the two but a little bit more armed than the c class it has these two pontoons out to give it increased speed with the extra propellers and to prevent it from tipping over when these guns turn. Each gun is an exact copy of the last with the same caliber and the same rate of fire, although this front gun has a higher elevation than 
the other two because it's its front weapon and it would need to aim higher for longer ranges. The top gun is mounted on a 360 turret so it can engage any targets around the ship and then the rear is on a 180 degree turret and this ship is very good at broadsiding especially with the pontoons being able to absorb a lot of the damage before it's able to impact its main hull and actually the a class and c class here they're built on the exact same hull and they sport almost the same speed although the a class has a speed of seven meters a second and the C class has a speed of around five meters a second. Now out of both these ships they were basically designed to support the main E class right here which is a lot heavily armored and it can take a lot more of a beating and on its own it can stand toe to toe with any deep water guard ship that we've come across and it should be able to do quite a bit of damage to any other enemy ships that we come across in the future. Now with these three ships together and including the two missile cruisers that we have this should be a pretty deadly force to reckon with. Now I want your guys opinion on the paint. I kind of painted this gray and I don't know I kind of like it but it just there's just something about it that's off but then I went back to these ones and they kind of look like they don't have anything to them compared to this one uh, the C class okay now let's set sail with our new fleet and what we're gonna do is rendezvous with our two missile cruisers out at the resource zone that we captured and we're going to clean up any remaining deep water guard and then we actually are going to see which uh, area we want to expand to next which would dictate which faction we're going to declare war on okay so right now our missile cruisers actually got intercepted by some deep water guard a small fleet of a sledge and I can't see what that is but they were on their way to rendezvous with our new battleships and we're just gonna have to take these guys out we probably there's probably a lot more deep water guard in this area which we're we may have to engage but Let's make short work of these guys and then rendezvous with our battleships. Okay, so that's an urchin. That's what that boat was. This guy's a little missile boat. And he's going to go bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Okay, let's move to this guy. Nice, now that these guys are taken care of, now what we're going to do is continue our mission in securing the area and pushing to our battleships. Okay, now it looks like a Moray and a Barracuda, which is actually like an airship that carries other smaller fighters, is actually attacking us with... Oh, well, we're pulling back our missile cruisers, so we're going to have our missile cruisers engage these guys and take them down try to get as far away as we can because that uh, barracuda is going to do a lot of damage
Now here I'm probably going to have our ships shoot these guys down first, but I definitely want this Moray dead since it's already hammering us, but this might be a lost battle. I don't know, our missiles are doing some damage. Okay, we might lose both of our ships here. Okay, with all these hordes of fighters, we didn't stand a chance. So we're going to come back here and get our vengeance. Now, after our missile cruisers were defeated, we found the need for a orbital defense satellite or assault satellite depending on how you look at it but basically this should give us a large view of the battlefield from space so we'll be able to plan our maneuvers better and also spot enemy movements before they're able to come any closer to us. We've actually been given instructions from command to construct two of these so we have a view of our already captured territory and also it'll give us a little look into future territory that we would be expanding into and these satellites will definitely help with our watching enemy movements and they are also fitted with missiles which can attack from orbit now here we are aboard our satellite as you can see we got a pretty big view of the surrounding battle space and we're going to maneuver this into our captured deep water guard resource zone to the east all right here we can see enemy ships now we're going to test our orbital defense satellite It is fit with missiles that have a short range, but the rocket motor doesn't actually start until they get into atmosphere. I believe it is on a 20 second delay. Now this thing's going to be a pain to try to hit. Okay, I'm going to change our missiles so they have more fins so they can maneuver better. Let's take the explosive warhead off. There we go. Much better. Now what is happening here? I do not know. Okay, there we go. Okay, so so far our defense satellite is working pretty well. It's definitely out of range of any enemies. And it can just hit them without any being any danger itself so far. So we're going to keep this on our outer territory here and use it to support any fleets that are being overwhelmed. Now we're going to be able to put our battleships to the test and have them engage this pre-quad and coffin now. This is actually a submarine, I did not know that.
Okay, his ammo is done. Now we are going to continue clearing these guys out as usual. And our satellite's actually pretty close. It is right there, so it's going to be able to provide support if our fleet needs it. And then we have our second defense satellite right over here guarding our main base and second base right there. Now it looks like to the north of us is a steady buffalo, which is a, which is I'm assuming a gun emplacement. And what looks like a Deepwater Guard command post, which we're going to have to take this out to stop enemy movements in this area. But we're going to continue our push up through here, then we're going to come back around down here and hit them. So. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me in the next episode of Warpath.